Hey students, let's start with example three. Find the exact value. So in example three, we have three examples within the example. So one I, we are going to do sine of alpha minus beta. Two I's, we are going to do cosine of alpha plus beta, and then three I's tangent of difference. Okay, now in your homework, you will see that you will need to apply both um, some and difference of sine, some and difference of cosine, and some and difference of tangent. But I figure if you can do one of those, you can do all of those. So that's why I'm only doing half. 3a, sine of alpha is given to you as 3 divided by 5. Then now this is really important right here. This is telling us, oops. This is telling us what quadrants alpha needs to be in. So in here it states that alpha is in between pi over 2 and pi. So pay attention to that. So we are going to draw a triangle for alpha. Now pi over 2 and pi will put you in quadrant number 2. So right now we know right away alpha is in quadrant number 2. If we know alpha is in quad 2, we can fill out all the measurements of your right triangle. Sine of alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. So this looks like a 3, 4, 5, except in quad 2, x is negative. Now let's move on to beta. They give you sine of beta is negative 1 over rad 5, which can be simplified as negative rad 5 over 5. And again, pay attention to these right here that will tell you what quadrant beta it's in. Now if you look at that, that's 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. That tells me, I'm going to get a different pen. Just give me one second. That tells me beta is in quadrant number 4. So go here and put in quad 4. Now they give you sine of alpha is negative 1 over rad 5. I'm going to fill that in. This is going to be negative 1 square root of 5, and then now you have to use your Pythagorean theorem to find the adjacent leg. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Your a is going to be negative 1 squared, b is unknown, equals rad 5 squared. And no, you can put negative 1. Uh, technically, you don't have to put negative 1 because um, measurements of a leg is never negative. That's why you see hypotenuse is never negative. But in trig, we are moving to different quadrants. That's why you see the y and x values are negative at times, depending on what quadrant um, it is in. So but that's why it doesn't matter in Pythagorean theorem. So negative or positive 1 will give you the same result. So 1 plus b squared equals 5. So b squared equals 4. So b is going to be 2. So fill that in. Now, if you choose to use the radical 5, negative radical 5 over 5, it's going to give you the same exact answer. Now, let's move on to 1i. 1i is the difference of sine. So, make sure you guys know this identity and know it really well. Now, the difference of sine is going to be sine of alpha times cosine of beta minus sine of beta times cosine of alpha. So sine of alpha, cosine of beta, I'm just going to put in my parentheses now and then find the value from the right triangle. Sine of alpha, so look at quadrant number two. Sine is going to be, looks like I have an extra quantity here. I don't think I needed this. Okay, there you go. Um, Sine of alpha is going to be opposite over hypotenuse, so that's going to be 3 over 5. Cosine of beta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, so 2 over rad 5. Take away sine of beta, so look at quad 4 again, so that's going to be negative 1 over rad 5. And go back to the red triangle, cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So from here you can rationalize first and then multiply or multiply and rationalize. Really a personal preference at this point. Um, at this level of mathematics you can choose. Uh, I'm not going to be picky as long as you know that you need to rationalize at the very end. 
Um, so over here I have 5.5. Now as you can see, the denominators are exactly the same. So technically I can simplify a little bit more. So I'm going to go 2 over 5 rad 5. And yes, you do need to rationalize. So multiply top and bottom by square root of 5. This will give me 2 square root of 5 all over 5 times 5. Final answer, 2 rad 5 all over 25. And go ahead and box that up. Now cosine, um, two i's, is cosine alpha plus beta. And cosine of alpha plus beta equals. So right now, if you haven't gotten this memorized, then write down the identity every time you do your homework. By the time that you're done with your homework, hopefully you will have a better uh, memorization of all of these identities, okay? So cosine alpha plus beta is cosine of alpha times cosine of beta, take away sine of alpha and times sine of beta. Very similar, cosine of alpha, you wanna go look at your alpha triangle, in our case is red, and then beta is the green. Cosine is adjacent, so that's gonna be negative four over five. Cosine of beta is two over rod five. Sine of alpha, go look at the red triangle, so it's going to be 3 over 5, and sine of beta is going to be negative 1 over about 5, and away we simplify. So negative 8 over 5 at 5 plus 3 over, oops, this 5 didn't get filled in. 5 at 5, take away, so this is negative 5 over 5 at 5, Simplify the top and the bottom, so negative 1 over rad 5. Now rationalize the denominator. Final answer is negative rad 5 all over 5, and box that up. Now, our last one is tangent. 1, 2, and 3 i's. Tangent of alpha minus beta. Again, if you don't have this already memorized, then go ahead and write down the identity. Rs is tangent of alpha, take away tangent of beta, all over one plus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. Now I'm just gonna pinch this in so I can see the triangle again. I don't remember what it was. So I'm gonna write down what tangent of alpha is so I don't have to go up and down, okay? Tangent of alpha is opposite over adjacent, so that's negative three over four. And then tangent of beta is going to be opposite, which is negative one over two. So with those two values, that's really all I needed for three i's. I will make this bigger again and get my blue pen and fill things in. All right, here we go. Tangent of alpha is negative three over four. Take away negative one half all over one plus negative three over four times negative one half. And from here, let's simplify. Looks like on the numerator, I might need to find a common denominator. So this is negative three over four plus two over four. On the denominator, I don't need it quite yet. I'm going to multiply. Negative 3 times a negative 1 is positive 3 over 8. On the top, now I can do, okay, negative 1 quarter. All over LCD, this is 8 over 8 plus 3 over 8. So that will give us negative 1 over 4 all over 11 over 8. Now technically, I'm going to do this. Um, old school, negative one-fourth. When you are dividing, you multiply by its reciprocal, so 8 over 11. And as you can see, we can go, oh, boop, 1 and 2. We can cross-simplify, that's negative 2 over 11. Now, if you can go from here, if you can see that, oh, okay, these two fractions are just dividing each other anyway, you can definitely um, simplify that way. So if you can see that this is really now negative 1 over 1 divided by 11 over 2, then all you do is, what happens when you have a 1 divided by a fraction? All you do is really flip this fraction and you would get the same answer. Um, that's just another way of doing that. Anyway, you can definitely take the denominator and, and flip it, okay? But if you choose to go this route over here, that's also okay. 
Now we have another example here on the next page. I gave you plenty of space. Uh, sometimes I write really big, so hopefully you guys have enough room for all of these. Uh, B, under the same instruction, okay, you have first, let's figure out what quadrant that is and what quadrant that is. So I'm going to draw my right triangles out, alpha, this is beta. Okay, so cosine of alpha is one half and it says alpha is negative pi over two. Now remember, negative pi over two is going this direction, so that is in quad four. I will now go in and draw my right triangle in quad four. Now cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse because I need to use Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, one squared plus b squared equals two squared is four, b squared equals three, so b equals square root of three. So this is square root of three, but because you are in quad four, your y value is negative. Similarly, and sine of beta is one third, and they give, they give you beta, it's from zero, to pi over 2, so that's in quad 1. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so a squared is 1 squared plus b squared equals 3 squared, so this is b squared equals 8 because 3 squared is 9, 9 taken over 1 is 8, b squared is square root of 8, which you do need to simplify down to 2 rad 2, so 2 rad 2. Because this beta triangle is in quad 1, all of these sides are positive. Okay, so let's move on to 1i, which is, as you remember, it was sine of alpha minus beta. Can you do me a favor and um, write out the identity before we start? If you haven't done it, can you hit pause and do it? Write out the identity. Okay. All right, now that you have try to write out your own identity. I will now write mine here to see if we agree. Okay. Okie dokie. Hopefully we are matching. Um, another way that I sometimes like to do as well is because I know I need sine of alpha and cosine of beta and, and sine of alpha and so on and so on. So what I normally like to do is I write them out first, okay? So sine of alpha is, and then that way I don't even have to think about it, okay? And then cosine of alpha is one half. Then over here, same thing, sine of alpha, not alpha over here, this is beta. This is beta equals one over three, and then cosine of beta equals 2 rod 2 over 3. Now we can go even a step further because in 3i we need tangent, so we can go opposite over adjacent. We can simplify that later. Same thing over here. Let's do that as well. Tangent of alpha is opposite, which is negative rod 3 all over 1, which is really negative rod 3. Okie dokie. Now that we have all of those, I can move up and just fill it in, right? sine, cosine, cosine, and sine. And we wrote them all down now, we just have to find them. This is gonna be negative rad three over two. Cosine of beta is going to be two rad two over three. Cosine of alpha is going to be one half. And sine of beta is one third. Okay, let's multiply. This is gonna be negative two rad six all over six minus one over six. Now, if you think about it, you can simplify these, okay? But I'm not. What I want you to do is all of your answers, I want it over one common denominator. So we are just going to write the numerator together just like that. Technically, you can box that up. Another answer is you can take out the negative in the front here, or the negative one, that is. And you can write two rad six plus one all over six, okay? All right, either one I will accept. Now let's go and do two i. Two i was cosine of alpha plus beta. 
what I want you to do is I want you to do this question on your own and give me the answer here at the bottom. Can you hit pause and try that on your own, please? We have one last one on this example. It was a tangent of alpha minus beta. So just like before, why don't you take a minute and write down the identity for tangent minus beta? Feel free to hit pause, please. Okay, now that you have written it down, let's compare to see if we match. Okay, hopefully we're matching up. Now earlier I wrote um, tangent up here, but I'm going to copy it back down so that way I don't have to move up and down. So we knew tangent of alpha was negative rad 3, and then we wrote tangent of beta was 1 over 2 rad 2. Now if we feel like rationally um, rational, rationalizing this right now, we can multiply top and bottom by rad 2. So that's rad 2 over 2 times 2, which is really rad 2 all over 4. So we can use this one and rationalize later, or this one right away. Really a personal preference. Okie dokie, let's fill it in. Let me stretch this out. Okay, so tangent of alpha is negative square root of 3 minus, I'm going to use square root of 2 over 4, the rationalize for tangent of beta. So square root of 2 over 4 all over 1 plus negative square root of 3 times square root of 2 over 4. Common denominator for this little guy is 4, so now that's really negative 4 rad 3. The denominator is still 4, so this is negative 4 radical 3 minus rad 2. Now notice how I did not combine the radicals because they are not exactly the same. On the denominator, I will now have 1 minus radical 6 all over 4. When you multiply, you can definitely multiply different radicals. It's just when you are adding or subtracting is when you may not. I will now change this 1 into a denominator of 4, so a 1 becomes a 4 over 4. So let's go a step further. Negative 4 radical 3 take away rad 2 all over 4. Okay, I'm going to move my page over. Divided by whoop, 4 minus rad 6 all over 4. Now as you can see, I can get rid of these right away. I don't need to worry about um, because when you're dividing, those are exactly the same. You can cancel those. Now if you want to um, change it to multiplication and flip the denominator as you can see that will also cancel that out so all i now have is negative 4 radical 3 take away radical 2 all over 4 minus radical 6 and yes you must rationalize your denominator so this has two terms it's a binomial to rationalize all binomials with one radical term, you will now need to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate is changing this sign to be its opposite on just the denominator. Remember, you're only changing that middle sign. You don't change the sign in the front. So that's a conjugate. So when you multiply to the denominator, you will multiply to the numerator and distribute. Now, what's nice about conjugates is that you don't need to multiply the two terms in the middle. You don't need to do the terms in the middle because the sign to opposite. So when you do opposite sign, they cancel each other. So conjugates mean you only need to multiply the first two terms and the last two terms. Um, radical 6 times radical 6 is rad 36, which is really just back to 6. Now, on the numerator, they are definitely not conjugates, so I will foil everything out on the numerator. Moving that up a tad bit. Hopefully you have more space than I do currently. I might need to pin it in and try to squeeze that in somehow. Okay, so this guy. Negative 4 rad 3 times 4, negative 16 rad 3, negative 4 rad 3 times rad 6. That's negative 4 square root of 18 
you already have that, so I'm going to do that guy right there. Keep on going. Numerator, negative rad 2 times 4, that's minus 4 rad 2. And last, that's going to be negative rad 12. I'm going to find some space. Um, can you see if I were to... Okay, I'm going to move it down here, and then I will move it back up. Okay, so now on the denominator, I'm going to move it all the way over here. The denominator is not bad, that's just 10. Then I have negative 16 radical 3 minus 4 rad 18 is really 9 times 2. Then minus 4 rad 2 rad 12 is really square root of 4 times 3. As you can see, I'm trying to write everything out so we can simplify. So this is negative 16 rad 3. This is really 4 times 3 rad 2. This is 4 rad 2. And then this is really 2 rad 3, all over 10 again. We can combine those two dudes right there because those are both with radical 3. So that will give us an answer negative 18 radical 3. We can combine those two guys. That's a negative 12 rad 2 and a negative 4 rad 2. So that's going to be negative 16 radical 2 all over 10. On the numerator, I'm going to take out a 2 because it's even. So that's negative 9 rad 3 minus 8 rad 2 all over 10. The reason I factor it out because I know I can simplify this, right? And I believe that is our final answer. This is negative 9 radical 3 minus 8 radical 2 all over 5. Okay, and if you like to, if you want to take out the negative sign and write it in the front, I'm okay with that. No big deal at all. Okay, now if you see in your textbook that they write it like this. If you see in the textbook, they have the negative in the front. If you just see this negative in the front, that means it is applying to both terms on the numerator. So make sure this negative is lining up with this bar. So whenever you're checking your answer and you see that negative sign in the front lining up with the fraction bar, that means it's applying to all terms on the numerator. 